Alright, good morning everyone. Mm, let's change the volume here. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Let's see. So today is the final installment of the turtle lessons. It's probably the longest lesson I've done, but there's lots of good stuff in there. Let me just get my drawing tool out. go now we can draw so like every video I'll start with the recap of the previous lessons and then I'll move on to what we're doing today um, a lot of talk about about turtle it's quite a fun god um, so the first I think the last two weeks we were just looking at um, turtle defenses turtle attacks and then this week we're looking at defenses so in the first week we mainly talked about front headlock and rear turtle this is where most of our front headlock I'd say is mostly where our submissions come from um, in terms of there's no back yet and rear turtle is where we crucifix and all the back takes come from so I would highlight all the important things that, um, that I mainly talk about um, the first one is the front headlock control which is where I want to be leaning on top of the neck there as much pressure as I can with my base nice and wide so it's not within reach so this is our optimum base there okay and this is the active controller um, on the other side, so you can see the tricep grip there. Very important for pulling. And I'm keeping my legs away as far as I can to prevent any sort of takedown or them grabbing the leg. So this is one of the important factors of playing front headlock, I'd say. Uh, moving on. Um, for the attacks from the front headlock, so I'd say from that little stance we can move on to go to chase the back or we can look for submissions. So guillotine will be our first one. My main indicator for this would be them going for your legs, not protecting the neck. You can slide in and shoot for your guillotine. We have our anaconda chain. Just shooting our arm through, rolling all the way through and locking up and we have our DOS which is where we walk towards the side shoot our arm through and then lock it up there's other options there we've got the Peruvian tie and there's a lot of quite quite a few more submissions that you can go for but I'm just highlighting um, the, the main ones if you guys want to watch this lesson they'll be in the past lessons so you can watch them in detail so right now I'm just rushing through everything um, side turtle okay this is where if we're not chasing the back our next back swing is the crucifix just trapping the arms there and then looking for our options so here we did the one arm choke Which is this one again I'm gonna be blasting through it but go back to the previous lessons if you want to watch it in detail there's a choke there's a choke um, arm bar is another option from there which is this one here oops And we've got a little bit of back scenario where you're directly behind the person. 
So there it goes, our arm triangles. This is mainly when the person's trying to forward roll out. We can shoot in for our arm triangle. Okay, so these are the crucifix. I'm just add a section here. Then we got our regular back takes now. We have the direct hooks, which is mainly you climbing over the top. Um, oh, this one's the hook entry, sorry. So this is direct entry. This is where we just climb over the top and we step over. So big step over, hook goes in. Hook entry is where we slide our hook in instead. So that's our bottom hook first. So we might be inside turtle. So we, we switch our base, we slide the knee in, pull the person back, and... That's our little slide entry. And then last but not least, this is quite a good one. Truck entry, this is where we kind of, it's almost like the slide entry, but we shove our whole knee through. And we change our base towards the legs, which then we can pull back and get our twister hooks in and etc. Okay, so these are, that was all from last week. Then we get into the turtle counters or the escapes, um, which can be quite difficult of understanding. So I split into as many slices as I can to make it as simple as properly. So the first thing that we get back to is the front headlock control correctly. Okay, so this stunts here. So if they're not doing this, we're able to do a few counters. One of them is the turtle switch when they have double overhook. Which looks like this. Right shoot through. And we can also grab the leg for a single if they're not respecting um, their base properly. Cool. Um, the next slice is understanding that they can also run around to the side to chase for your back. Okay. This is where we need to expect the transition as they do catch their leg if you can. Okay, so this is the transition there that we're trying to avoid. And this is me catching the leg to go for a single of some sort. Cool. So that's the single leg against the spin. But to be expected if they are in this sort of sprawling stunt, right? So always try to be one step ahead of your opponent and catch that leg. Let's see. Um, the next slice is morning. Did I get my dates wrong again? Jesus, I did. <laughs> I've, I've lost the dates again. Today is Thursday. Oh no. Right, I'm gonna still record this for tomorrow. <laughs> I was I was like I think it's cause yeah. I've been lost on dates lately. Oh that's embarrassing. I put it on Inst let me get it out of Instagram just to be actually I could just advertise it for tomorrow. This is Kirstein's fault. I think she tricked me into thinking. I bet you should play the joke on me. I asked her what day it is. And she said Friday. Anywho, I'll record this and upload it tomorrow. So, knowing when to turn it to avoid points, you're just in time for the recap, Steve. So, don't worry. Um, knowing when to turn it to avoid points. Here we go. So Kirsten here has passed my guard. Instead of shrimping, um, especially when the person's controlling their hips really well, go to turtle instead. So there. One, two. I turtle to avoid the points. And that's it. Then we have our Granby rows. So this was Tuesday's, cl uh, Tuesday's class, yeah where we start the 
turtle, but we move our hips in between and then we circle out. Again, I'm just rushing through these. They'll be in YouTube if you want to watch them in details later on. And then we have the forward row, which is mainly when the person's directly behind you. And then the last little slice that's not from today is understanding the hook awareness, which mainly is as the person turtles, um, you don't want those hooks to be going in and that's both of them. So just be aware by tucking in your elbow as close as you can to your rib cage and then you can avoid it quite well. Cool. Right, side turtle. So this is today's class now. We're still working on the escapes, but um, there's some nice little moves that you can do from here. So. The teller sweep, aka the side turtle. I think they're called, it's called clothesline sweep as well, sometimes. But it goes like this. So for all of these sequences, my partner is going to be directly on my side with a harness in place. So their arms are together here. This works really well on the gi as well. So you can use this regardless gi or no gi for some of the moves. But it works like this. Um, this knee is directly behind you, okay, that means both of the legs are in this direction. So there's really no base for them on this side except for this arm. And because they stay with the harness, they kind of lock themselves in place, which is quite good. But we're going to step directly behind the person with our left leg in that case there. And we're just going to grab a hold of the leg or just draw our elbow in and we're just kind of like throwing our arms all the way to the other side and cutting our knee through that makes sense so it looks like this I'm gonna slide my knee in fall into my side and that's our little little telesweep okay here's a better angle of it Steven's video here so you can see the leg work he steps directly behind me and slides his knee in and just sits through his hips. The main problem people have with this sweep is um, they don't sit through towards their hips, okay? So make sure that instead of like just trying to throw the person using your whole body and arms, use your kind of like your knees and hips instead to like change direction. So sit through and then just throw your hips side to side, right? Um, so this is, I think, I forgot the name of it, it's called Clothesline. I think Steve has the name. Clothesline Sweeper. And a f like probably your go-to move if they're in this stance, like really high chance, really well. Um, the next one is the wrist strap. This one, I didn't mention this one as the person on top of my last lesson, so I'll remind you now, which is, hello brother, how are you? Again, I mixed up the dates, so this is supposed to be tomorrow's lesson. Or I can just give the excuse that I wasn't um, free tomorrow and I'm recording it today. I should probably use that. It's a bit better, less embarrassing. Um, so one of our wrist traps lesson is not one of our side little sequences. Is, if I was the person on top, I never want this arm to be too deep through because, like I said, it's the arm that gets you stuck, and it's the only base you have towards that side. So I wouldn't be attached with that arm too deep, right? And here's why. People can grab your wrist and trap you like this. Okay, so just grab a hold of your wrist and then they can do exactly the same sweep or a few other ones as well. And the person can't base out. Okay, so it's literally it's exactly the same sweep, but there's um, a little bit more combinations that we can do from it. But again, here we go. 
Now we get into the fancy ones. Um, on the last lesson, we saw Eduardo Tellis doing this in the comp video analysis quite a bit. But it's the run around sweep now. So in this case, a partner, it can be on their, they can be on their leg as well, but we're going to try to force them to drop down onto their knee. And we do this by just building our base backwards. So we're like shrinking our body back. They will see it's quite uncomfortable for the person to stay there and they might drop onto their knee. If not, you're going to try to do the same thing. We're going to grab right at the bend of the knee there. And we're going to literally run around as fast as we can to the other side. And that will collapse them. Um, I always forget the sweep, but it works well. And like I said, we saw Tellus doing it in the comps quite a bit. I think this was his main sweep. So one more time, catch the leg, run around behind. Dead easy. Here's the knee collapse one. Oops, let's fix that. So again, they have their harness. This time we're gonna go over the top to try to force that knee into collapsing. And then we're gonna roll over them. Uh, I'd say this one's probably the hardest one. I have tried this a few times in rolling. Um, but you can get yourself in quite a bit of trouble. Especially if the person's fast, jumping over to the other side. But it's one of your options there. Okay, collapse the knee and then do a shoulder roll. All of these positions, let me talk about the ending. We end up in this kind of like octopus position where we're facing towards the legs. It's really important that we don't stay really low onto their body because they can push you, they can shrimp, they can get your back. There's lots of little troubles that can happen while you're trying to do this move. So the best case scenario, as soon as you sweep them, move your body up to avoid it, all right? Um, the last little slice is just pulling guard. You can do this as well. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail because literally you just the person hasn't doesn't have a good control on you, so you just sit back, pull guard, all right? But again, all of these sequences are when our opponent's directly onto our side with a harness. That's when we're gonna do these moves, all right? Not from front headlock and not when they're directly behind. Okay, that's different counters from there. So that's our side turtle slice there. Any questions so far about these side, um, side turtle? For all of these little sequences, we need to be careful with the crucifix. We need to be careful with a lot of little moves, all right? especially the jumps the jumps are the main thing so you have to react quite fast if you feel them trying to jump over you okay but if it's a static person with a harness like this and they're just trying to control you they don't really have a plan per se um it's quite a good good time to go for um, let's see because we don't trap them, what's the angle you want when you step behind? Um, let's see. I think this this little position shows shows the angle the best. So, when you step up behind, you just want your legs to be behind theirs, right? And that right now we're not trapping them at all. Um, they're trapping themselves because they're holding on to the harness. And then this change of the angle is just you sitting to the other side of your hip, basically. So I slide my knee in. And I cut through. And then at the end, we just want to move our hips backwards as much as we can. So we always want to be in this sort of like behind our opponent with this leg. As long as you're behind them with this leg, yeah? You're always good. Like there's not much that can go wrong. Okay. Because it's really hard for them. To take this leg out. And throw it over the top. 
Um, they can still do it, especially if they're quite, kind of like bouncy and quite fast. But as long as you're quick to step up behind, you're generally okay. And a lot of people here will try to choke you. They'll try to do quite a few little things that are going to actually help you to do the sweep, right? A lot of people try to choke you because you base up on their arms. And it does feel like they're starting to get a choke in or they're right underneath your chin. But what happens is as they try to lock up, you sit through and you end up in this stance with them still trying to choke you. But it's not the perfect angle. So they won't be able to finish you off. So you can use this as a bait quite successfully. All right. Um, so we had the tele sweeps here. The wrist traps and now we're left with so that's pretty much most of your moves from the side turtle okay so again from this side position here. there are a few other ones that you can do but I'd say this is the most important one and like I said they can switch their base so be aware of that um, but this is a kind of a bulletproof little technique Moving on, submission counters now. So these are from the front headlock position. So this is from directly in front. So this is usually going to come around when you shoot for a single or a double. The person sprawls on you, so you're left in this sort of turtle stance. All right. We talked about when they transition already and what to do from there. So in this little scenario, it's all about the subs, okay? And the first one is the guillotine counter. If you find your partner trying to go for a guillotine on you. Now, this is going to be fundamental to all types of guillotine. We want to learn which is the safe side and which is the kind of dangerous side for us to go on. Okay? As a simple rule, um, if your head is in one side you want your body to be on the other side right so here's where the counter is going to start as soon as i realize where my head is going for the guillotine attempt i'm going to start moving my body towards the opposite side right the main so if we go back to our actual submissions which we go here the main killer for the guillotine okay is preventing the person from jumping over okay which we do that by using our legs or sometimes our high wrist guillotine which is our elbow but in this case most people will be using that leg to prevent the jump over okay this is our main counter to stop people from jumping over the top so our biggest concern is this leg as the person defending and we need to address that quite early on. If we leave it too late, then we're going to have to do different counters. So, as Kirstine here is going for the guillotine, I'm going to be blocking that leg, which exposes my neck a little bit more. But as long as I'm confident with the counter, I'll be okay. Right? So now, I control that leg so it's not going over the top of me. She takes the bait by sitting through. So now I jump over the leg and we're left with a side control position, right? Um, a lot of people still stay with the guillotine here. And you can do like the Von Flew choke. You can frame their neck to go for some other shoulder locks. Okay. But I won't go into detail of that. The main bit is just this guillotine counter. So again, Kirsten sits through. I know... Where my head is, it's on this side. So I want my body to go to the opposite side. And this is the leg I want to block in most cases. All right. The other killer is the high elbow, okay, which I didn't show here. Which is before they actually sit through, this elbow here acts as a little frame on your neck. So if that's the case, you need to get rid of that elbow first before anything but this is the most common kind of guillotine attempt people are going to do to you ok 
Okay? So everyone understand which is the safe side in the guillotine. You'll be good. Moving on to the DOS. This one's a bit more tricky. Um, I think I have... Yeah. Let me just check if this is the early one or the late one. This is the late one. This is the early one. So early counter towards the anaconda. The really early one would be double wrist control. If you can catch the wrist, if you can't be able to shoot through. We're assuming they got into this sort of position already. This one's quite early and it's probably one of the safest ones you can do. But it's also if you're really scared of the submission basically. Okay, which is the lie dead one or the lie under. Which basically is you're gonna put your opponent in a scenario where they can't hold on to the lock by giving up north south okay so it's gonna look like this so you're there she wants to either finish from here or to roll me over completely to the other side um actually let me just quickly show you what the submission looks like so everyone knows so this is what i'm attempting to do here you lock it up you spin underneath and then we adjust to finish there that's the choke they're trying to do okay so this is the early counter as soon as you're aware that you're on it I'm gonna give up everything I'm gonna lie my arm completely flat onto the opposite side and I'm gonna spin towards my back and now if the person isn't fast enough here so she wanted to roll with me so I'm essentially rolling before she does. Um, she needs this little gap here to be able to get me over to the other side. Otherwise, she rolls over her own head. So if you do this, there's no space for her to roll underneath. She'd have to roll over her head and all my body weight will have to roll over her neck and her wrist. So it's like physically impossible for them to stay there and the further back you go the more pressure you put onto their wrists and biceps so you can see by her face it's hurting a little bit already and it forces them to let go okay like this now i wouldn't use this all the time i would only use this when this is quite full like kind of fully locked sort of fully locked but not too deep because it can be cranky on your neck but it probably hurts the person a little bit more than you so as long as you do this quite quick before they roll you're all good nice okay um they can go for a little north south joke on you so do be careful with that but other than that it's kind of okay um this dark one let's see we want this one now so this is the late counter or the one you'd want to do if the person's doing everything correctly so as they roll underneath this is where it starts to get dangerous I'm gonna bring both of my arms up as much as I can and I'm gonna block the legs okay because her legs is what turns her onto her side it's what adjusts the chokes it's what kind of kills you a little bit okay so if she runs towards you you run away and you kind of go into little circles where both your arms are up to give you a little bit of breathing room okay and then when you feel safe enough from this position here unless they have a beautiful like setup on the choke you should be should be breathing here okay and now you can see her lock up over here it's a terrible angle you can see she has a little rear naked choke lock up and because I brought both of my arms up what I can do is I can do a little cheeky counter when I feel safe I'm also bridging over making sure my head is right on her chest I can grab her wrist when I feel safe and I can kind of strip this grip 
by going into an Americano. So I pull the grip, I lock it up, and I kind of get up on top. Right? Um, very rare that you actually finish the submission, but it does give them a little scare, like here. Okay? And it's quite easy to do, you'd be surprised because they'll be locked up. Um, it's quite an easy reach for you to grab it. So one, two. And this is why, remember in the actual choke lesson, we went over a few details that make this choke really powerful. So we have cable grip, we push through, we spin underneath. And that's usually why I don't lock up straight away, All right? So I stay with my harness here. I use my legs to adjust everything there. And then while her arms trapped with my legs, that's when I lock up. So here, the person on the bottom is quite screwed. Okay. They, they're really limited to their options there. Right. But that's because I did every little step kind of patiently. But if they miss any of those steps, we can do this late counter. Okay. So it depends how much the person on top te like technical capabilities are. If they skip everything, you'll be able to do this. If they do everything perfect, we're kind of screwed in there. We're going to have to work on something else. All right. And then DOS chokes, okay, is the last little section on the submissions. The DOS choke was this one, if you guys don't remember. This one, we walk directly to the side. We shoot our arm through. We lie underneath them. And then we lock it up and we squeeze. Again, when, I, when I'm thinking about doing this technique, okay, there's a lot of factors. One of them is that head pressure there to keep the person down. The second one is as I lie underneath, I'm throwing my leg over the top to keep the arm in place and then lock it up. Now, the doors can be very dangerous if you don't counter it early. Okay, by early I mean these little stages where they're lying underneath, okay? Which is technically a little bit later, but it's not like as they're choking you. The first one, um, actually does, I think, ah oh crap, I didn't put the second one here. So there's only one here. So, the f it's probably the safest one as well. As they lie underneath you, you're going to lie the same sort of base as they have. Okay? It's really important. If I stay on my knees here, I will get choked. So, as she cuts through her hips, I'm going to cut through my hip. And now we end up in this little weird stunt where I'm lying on top of her. And I can swing this arm all the way to this side. And that will break the grip that they have. They won't be able to hold on to the lock. This is my favorite counter. This is the one I look for the most. Okay. They lie underneath. I lie with them. And I'm swinging this arm all the way to the other side. So I need to be high up on their body. So I need to lock up all the way to the sky to be able to discounter. But this is a lifesaver here. And you end up in a really nice stance. Okay. But the main trigger here is you see them sitting onto the hip. You sit with them. I tell you right now, if you stay on your knees, you'll be impossible to take this arm over to the other side later. Right. The only other option you have is to put your arm underneath their back. And even then, it can be quite neck cranky. So this is the safest bet. And that's our DAS counter. Um, only from turtle sort of position. This technique it takes a little bit of getting used to it, but it's very good. And our last little slice is 
Man, this lesson is so long. Look at these. All of this turtle sequences. Leg entanglements, okay. Um, Kirsting wasn't here to film, so I've stolen Steve's little videos. Um, and we have... So this, just to give a little subsection. In this case, from the counters, okay, point of view, the person is sitting directly behind you. So it's not side turtle and it's not front headlock. This is where we're going to look for these leg entanglements. The first one is kind of a knee bar roll, which is if the person is staying with one leg at this, can be in this angle, can be on, on their knees as well, but they're kind of got one leg in between both your legs. We're going to do a little shoulder roll and look for that leg. It's going to look like this. And we're going to start attacking the knee bar. It's kind of a hard knee bar to pull off. If the person defends, you're going to end up in 50-50. So it's not the end of the world. But again, their foot's directly behind you, in between your legs. Reach for the foot and do a roll. All right. Again, that's not a uh, optimum finish, like angle finish. I mean, you're probably gonna, if you are gonna finish, it's not gonna look like that. Um, it's gonna probably be if the person tries to roll out of it, then you'll get the knee bar. From this angle, you'll probably end up in 50-50. Um, forward roll, okay. So again, so this is where the leg entanglement and the hooks kind of come into play. When they get behind you, right, or they step in between, you can make this little hook, which we call turtle half guard. There. And it's a, like, it's a really good hook, okay? If we play knee twist and if we play different little slices, you understand that this is quite similar to that little position, right? You can keep the person stuck, they can't take your back, and there's a lot of fancy things that you can do. And the first one is just the forward roll, okay? Do that. You end up in the same little stance as the knee bar. This is the 50-50 that I talked about that's going to happen in most cases. But essentially, it's the same thing here, but without the person being stepped up. So if they're stepped up, you kind of just look for the leg with your hands. Like this and you just roll but most commonly if they're on their knees like this you take that little hook or you can force this as well okay you can give them your leg and then hook and that's our forward row okay and the last little slice and this is one that I forgot but it can be really annoying a lot of um, people will kneel across your thigh to cause you pain so you can kind of react, okay? We call them douchebags, <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of people do this. So they use their shin bone right on your calves to cause you pain and that will force you to either like sit on your hip or like do something weird. And then they can take your back or, or do some sort of submission on you, right? So if people kneel on your thing and it hurts, your usual counter is grab their foot and talk the hell out of it, pull it through, and tuck your leg in. And you'll get this nice little sweep, okay? Even if you don't get the sweep, they'll stop kneeling on your calf, okay? But just grab a hold of it. Downside to this, uh, you can get crucifix pretty badly with it. But as long as you're fast, you should be good. So again, I'm pulling the foot. And look at Steven's foot here. It's tucking in towards that direction. There. So it's like a double windshield wipe. And then sit through. And then we're all good. So again, there is a normal speed. Right, and that is our last little slice 
on the full turtle counters. Okay, there are a few more. Um, there's a few more submissions that I can do. I'll quickly show you. This is the actual man himself. Most of the moves are off from him that I'm showing today. Eduardo tell us, but he's got a few free videos on Show YouTube teasering his octopus guard. So again, in this scenario, the guy is directly on the side. This is some Kimura attacks that you can do. So he actually pulls off a few submissions from there. Um, I'll put a link down so you guys can watch it later on. There you go. But hopefully, throughout, so like I said, I rushed through a few of these lessons, but they're on YouTube already. So hopefully, we have a little better understanding of the turtle guard um, for those watching tomorrow. Um, we talked about the front headlock, the rear turtle, right? We talked about the side turtle, the escapes and the attacks. Uh, we didn't do too much actual back sequence because you already have a back lesson so you can look at the hook lessons for further detail than that and then the main thing from front headlock is the understanding of the base we talked about grambies and when to use them when to avoid points um, and then we looked at all the subs and submission counters that we can have a look for so pretty overall we should have a decent understanding with all of this that we did on the turtle guard and how to do how to defend how to attack from the turtle kind of position and you can see there's a lot of moves that you can go for as the person defending um, like these little turtle sweeps and you can end up in like great positions so don't be don't like think that turtle guard you're in a bad spot if you can master the turtle guard and like people can't take your back and people you guess like people you sweep people from there like Eduardo tell us you have like quite a bit of confidence on your turtling and you won't get caught out as much as you do so any questions um private message me tomorrow because there won't be a live chat Um, but yeah, but bottom of turtles race, yeah, it's always a position, like, I think, right, the bigger you are, the easier it is to, like, pull off all of these moves, I think, to be honest, right, um, Eduardo Tell is quite big guys, big guys tend to have kind of a good turtle in terms of defending. Because we've like, especially against smaller people, obviously. Because if we're not able to get the hooks in, it's harder for us to climb over to get any sort of thing. But I think like Granby's and avoiding hooks is really important for smaller guys. These side turtles here are very good. But there's always a downside to everything, obviously. Like especially if people are faster than you. Um, turtling is kind of like risky, very risky, especially if they're fast and they know all their back takes transitions. But I think at an early stand, -up, like early little point of view, if you can become really good at turtle, then and there's a few people in the gym that are very hard to submit from the turtle guard or take their back, so it is possible. But yeah, it's just knowing what counter to do for every little stunt the person has. But the most common one, and I think the most fundamental one, is front headlock. I think whatever case you are, this little sequence here is really important. Like the side one, I'd say you will get caught quite a lot in this as the person on top and as the person on the bottom. But I think front headlock is like the bulletproof one. If you know your counters there really well, then you won't be subbed and you won't let the person transition. 
this kind of your safe point in terms of all belts but yeah any questions today <laughs> that will be most of the lesson like I said, study Eduardo Tellis if you guys want to get really good at Turtle. He has a nice Turtle DVD. And yeah. But anyway, that is the end of the lesson today. That is Turtle finished. I'll upload this and I'll put it into like a Google Drive for you guys. If you want to um, see it. But that is all for today. Like I said, sorry I got my days mixed up. So this will be recorded from yesterday. Um, so I'll put it up tomorrow. But thanks for the guys who joined in today. Uh, I forgot to double check the date. But yeah, hopefully um, the lesson was alright. And have a... L <laughs> yeah, extra brownie points. <laughs> Steve's always ready. Hopefully you guys have a good weekend. For those watching tomorrow. And take it easy. No worries. If you guys got any guys got any requests for next week, let me know down. Um Alright, see you guys soon.